Hi everyone! Welcome back to the Techmaki channel. Today we're going to continue and finish the implementation of our generic repository because we're going to make it more than just a repository that is generic that is inside of the menu. We're going to make it a NuGet package. In order to make it a NuGet package, we need to make sure that we really have the full separation and full decoupling of all of this repository implementation in order to make sure that when another consumer, let's say another project or any any anyone that wants to consume that, can basically just use this as is. All right, so now we are going to do the last thing that was missing from our previous implementation. What is missing here is basically to create a generic exception also as well, because this code here can fail, right? Uh, if something happens, like for example, the insert or update fails because the database is not initialized or any other reason, right? We need to make sure that when we generate and we throw the exception, this exception is not a RavenDB exception. It's a generic repository exception that the consumer can basically put there on their try catch and capture this repository exception without having to specify, oh, this is a RavenDB exception, this is a, a MongoDB exception, because this way it removes the coupling from the consumer code. So let's try to do it here for the insert or update. First, let's create the class. Uh, so public class, let's call it repository exception. Exception, okay. Then it inherits from exception, of course, the generic one. What happens here is that we need to create a constructor. And this constructor will receive the message so we're going to receive a string message, and then we're going to receive the exception on itself. All right, then the base class, which is basically the exception. Uh, so just to be very clear here, let me enter in the exception so you guys know what I'm talking about. So the exception can either receive like no parameter and it can receive the message and the exception, which we call inner exception in this case. So what I'm going to do here is use the implementation that has message and inner exception. So great, so let's use this. So let's pass on the chain, right? Uh, the message and also the exception, all right? So then let's use this in the insert or update, get all and the get. So first let's do it for the insert or update. Try, catch, this is the try. This code is going to be inside of the try. So this is the code that is going to be evaluated in case something, anything happens. We're going to capture the exception and then do what we need to do. Okay, so catch exception ex. And here it's going to be the moment where we retro, right? We throw the exception uh, level higher and we are going to throw this as a repository exception. Throw new repository exception and this repository exception is going to receive all the parameters like ex.message and then ex.inner exception which is the exception that is inside of this exception okay and then let's just take a look if you have anything else no that's exactly the point we have the inner exception here and then we're just going to throw this repository exception instead of like RavenDB exception or any other thing all right, so now let's replicate the same thing for the other classes. And done. Okay. All right, so now let's do control KD that formats the code. And then basically we have everything that we need. We have the exceptions being generated appropriately and they are all wrapped in this repository and being thrown as this repository exception instead of RavenDB specific. Okay, so now let's create a new class library project that will contain the implementation of our generic repository. So we're going to move everything to this new project. Okay, so let's do it. In here, in the source folder, let's just do the following. I'll right click here, add, new project, and then let's choose this as a class library. I'm going to actually filter here for a class library, and let's think about it. We have plenty of options over here. One is basically the net standard, and the other one that we are interested in is the net core. So what is the difference between net standard and net core? The net standard allows you to use it not only on .NET Core projects, it allows you to use it on the .NET framework as well. So let's select net core in this case, and then click next. 
we're going to define a name for our generic repository class. Let's call it basically a very generic name, uh, of course, that is still in the context of our project. Let's call it tmaki.persistence. All right, so tmaki.persistence, and then I click on create. This will create a very simple and kind of empty project for us. This project contains only this class one. It's just one class because it's a class library. Okay, so what is a class library? Class library basically is a DLL. At the end of the day, when it compiles, it will generate a DLL for you. Of course, that it may have other DLLs that are dependencies, but the objective of the class library is to generate one DLL with your implementation. So basically, this is very helpful because when we want to create libraries and DLLs that we want to use in other projects, this is how we do. We create this class library and then we can just reference this DLL on the other project, the consumer, and then the consumer will have exactly what it needs from this implementation here in a very generic way. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the code, everything that we have on the persistence, I think it's the name of the folder, let's see. Yes, persistence folder. We're going to copy everything from there to the tmaki.persistence. Let's do it. All right, so now let's solve all the dependencies. We need to make sure that we have everything that this library needs in order to run. So let's first take a look here. We are missing the Raven client. So let's go to and add the Raven client. So I'm gonna click here and then go to manage NuGet packages. And here I'm going to take a look for RavenDB client. All right, so RavenDB client is the one that I need to install. I'll click and install it. That's it, accept. And then now we have RavenDB client. Let's take a look at what is the effect on the class. So basically everything is now solved. The second thing that we need to make sure is we need to change the namespace because now the namespace is tmark.persistence. It's not uh, anymore tmark.menu.persistence. So let's make the change here. I'm going to actually find and replace because it's easier. So I'm going to do control F, right? Find the files. And I'm going to do this specifically on this project. I don't want to make it this change in the other project. So let's just do instead of tmaki.menu.persistence, I'm going to change this to tmaki.persistence. All right, so selecting this, replace all, and that's all that we needed. All right, let's see how it worked. It changed all the files, of course. Then let's save and see what else we're missing. All right, so after we save, let's go to this RavenDB context file. In this RavenDB context file, different than the other files, we are seeing more dependencies here, and we are seeing that things need to be reviewed. One is this persistent settings. First, it's because it needs to use the tmaki.menu. So if we use the tmaki.menu on the RavenDB context, then it's going to uh, easily resolve these persistent settings. All right, what else is missing here? There is this iOptions monitor. This iOptions monitor comes from the Microsoft.extensions.options. So we need to make sure that we also include this in our project. Let's do it. Let's go to the manage NuGet packages. And here I'm going to find Microsoft.extensions.options.configuration extensions, install it. Then click OK, I accept, and let's see the effect. All right, so it actually solved, and uh, the iOptions monitor here is now available for us. All right, so after this, we also need to make sure that when we are starting because if you think about all these implementations and classes and everything, they have constructors, they have some dependencies. So basically like this one, the RavenDB context, it expects an iOptions monitor to be injected in our dependency injection and actually be available in this class library. So we need to bring the dependency injection to our class library. But before we go there, let's take a look at the startup CS again from our tmaki.menu project. Going to the startup.cs, you remember that uh, we had, for example, all of this at singleton for the i repository, this i db context, the persistent settings and everything. So we need to make sure that we are going to have it in our class library as well. We don't want all the consumers to have to declare all of this dependencies and all of these injections in order for our library to work. So we are going to encapsulate it. We are going to create a single method, just like, for example, the add swagger gen, we're going to have in the future services.addPersistenceLibrary, 
right? And how can we do this? We need to do this by creating a class in our library that will contain an implementation of iService collection. So the iService collection is the one that we are going to implement. So if you look here at the Swagger Gen, you're going to see this in real life, right? You're going to see that this is an static class that actually has an static method inside. And this static method has this, this iService collection services. This is what makes the extensions possible. It is creating an extension for the iService collection. And then everything that it needs to inject as singleton or, or scope it or any, any other injection will be solved and wrapped and encapsulated in this add persistence library. Okay, so let's move and create this extension method in our library. All right, so getting back here to the temaki.persistence, I'm going to create a class over here. And this class is going to be public service collection extinctions. Let's see if the name is this one already, really or not. Yeah, service collection, yes. So it's going to be service collection extinctions. So getting back here, I'm going to create, oh, this needs to be a static class because we're going to create a extension method, as I said. And then we're gonna have public static and uh, the name is going to be add persistent, oh, we need to specify also the return. The return is going to be I service collection and add persistence, add persistence library. Yeah. And here we're going to specify this I service collection as services. All right. What is missing here? We don't have the I service collection. The I service collection is the dependency injection library that Microsoft also makes available. So let's go to the NuGet, manage NuGet packages, and then let's try to look for the dependency injections, Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection, I think, or something like this. Yes, Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. I'll click on this one and install. This is going to bring for us the service collection. And let's see here in our iService collection. Yes, we have using Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. Let's click on this guy and then Okay, we have the list of services available. In this case, we are using the services. So we are receiving the services as a as an initial parameter. It's, it's actually an extension. This is how you can write it in a very fluent way, which is like services dot, and then you call this method. But at the end of the day, you are getting this as a parameter from your method. And then with these services in hand, we're going to add all the additional injections that we need and then return the services as a response, okay? So that's the best way to do a fluent implementation, a fluent library. So let's go back to the startup.cs. And here I'm going to copy, actually cut, all the items here and then let's move it to this service collection extensions i'll paste it over here and then we have services the services are adding the single tone configuring and then let's return here the services return services all right so then persistent settings for example we need to import the dmarkey.menu that's all right. And here we need to receive this configuration.get section. This needs to be a parameter for us. So let's put I configuration and then configuration over here. And then let's expect that this configuration is going to come as a parameter. Configuration. Perfect. Uh, what is missing here? It's missing basically the Microsoft.extensions.configuration. So I'll import it and then we have the iConfiguration available. Getting back to our startup.cs, what we need to do is just send one parameter and this parameter will contain the configuration.get section database. Just to remember, this configuration section database is from the app settings and this is the one that we define it over here. So it's like a database, the database name and URLs. Okay, so that's all right. Of course, that for now, we don't have this persistence library available here for us. So I'll just comment for now, but in the future, we're going to have it available for us very easily. Then I'm going to move this to the appropriate file. So then let's just first compile. I'll right click here and build the solution. Let's see if we get a horse or any issue. Let's take a look. No, we have a successful build. Before we go to the NuGet, I'll right click here in the dependencies of the Tmaki menu and add a project reference. Okay, so now we have the this window open and we see here the tmaki.persistence. Let's actually mark this checkbox and then click in OK. This is going to link 
the two projects. So whatever is generated in the tmaki.persistence compilation, this DLL is going to be copied to the binary of the tmaki menu because tmaki menu has it as a reference. Okay. So if we open here in the dependencies, we're going to see this project dependency and tmaki.persistence. This is easy because this way we can easily test and check how are things working before we actually go in all the process of creating the NuGet package. So let's click here in the startup and uncomment this persistence library. Now let's see, it's going to tell us that we are missing something. We need to import this. Yes, using tmaki.persistence. All right, perfect. So we have the tmaki.persistence. Let's just make sure that we remove the tmaki.menu.persistence because we got rid of it. I'm just removing it right now. And let's see if the tmaki menu now compiles. Let's take a look. Build. Okay, uh, we have some problems, which is expected, uh, because basically we don't have this tmaki.menu.persistence anymore. And we need uh, actually the new one, the tmaki.persistence. So I'm going to make this change in all of the files. Oh, actually, there was only one file that was in need of it, which is the product controller. This is a good signal because it means that uh, we are not heavily like using everywhere uh, the persistence, which is great. We are being very specific to the controller class, which is great. OK, so now we can start the project. All right. So now we have the get product and then basically we can get the product based on the ID. So I'll try it out. And then, of course, that I'll make sure to put a breakpoint in our library. So let's see how it will react in our library over there. I'm going to mark here in the get method. I'm going to paste the ID over here and click in execute. Let's see how it goes. Yes, it actually reached out our library. And then we're going to see here that it's opening the session. Let's continue. And now we can see that we've got the appropriate response. We get the 200 and the product is over here best moment for us now to start thinking about the NuGet package, because then we have a very independent class library. We can now publish in the NuGet and use, instead of having a project dependency, a project reference, we can have a NuGet reference. And what is the difference? Why are we going to do this? Other projects from our solutions, like the other services, the order services, the customer services, all of them can reuse this library that we have just created. And it's a good practice if you think about the dry pattern, right? And what is the dry pattern? The dry pattern is don't repeat yourself. We are trying to do a little bit of dry here. We are trying to not repeat ourselves and create a generic repository that all the other services can use. There are very interesting discussions in regards to the, how much you actually create as libraries and you make it available for the other services to consume and how much you actually do in isolation, you do independently. If you really can create a library that is something generic, then it's okay to create this library. But what happens most of the time is that when we try to think too much about dry, when we are doing like microservices and we are doing services that are autonomous and independent, we can create a lot of hard dependencies between these services, which is not a good practice. Okay, so this is always a fine grained, a trade off situation. You always need to take the, a very cautious decision between everything as libraries or do I want to make some things as library, the, re, the ones that are really generic and can be this way in, in, a, in a without actually generating too much dependency versus actually situations where this is something that it's not worth to actually make it a library because it's going to generate a heavy dependency between the two services. Okay. So basically the other teams can develop their own solutions and basically they go independently of being linked or connected to a code that actually your team maintains. So this is a very important decision that we need to take when we are talking about working with multiple teams and every team working in a service, for example. All right, but let's continue that on the next video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification in order to receive information about my new videos. And if you have done that, please share this with your friends and colleagues so you can help me spread this free content. I hope to see you soon on the next video where we are going to actually publish the new get and use it on the menu microservice. I see you there.